Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. How are you tonight? And it is tonight because, uh, well, let's see, June 23rd. It's nearly 8 o'clock here in New Zealand. And, um, oh, I've had a real busy day. I won't even get into it, but, uh, suffice to say, some things have been going on with my new studio, and, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I won't even, uh, I won't even get into it. Let's just say that, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm at a crossroads. How about that? So if you, uh, oh, if you ever mind to pray, you can say a prayer for me because I'm really hoping to get it. But we've run into some stuff and, uh, we've got to resolve it. Oh, no, Thursday. So, uh, well, by my next weekend, um, broadcast, you'll, you'll know what's up. Anyway, let's talk about this painting. It's called Twilight Woods. It's a 7 by 10 And um, it won't be in my store. But if you like it <clears throat> and you want to buy it, just uh, just let me know. Because it's, it's with my uh, rep in the United States right now. So he could easily um, ship it for me uh, if somebody was interested. But... Uh, He's probably showing it to galleries. It might even be in a gallery somewhere. Either way, I can get my hands on it if you absolutely love it, like I do, really. Um, let me let me say, oh, actually, before we go too far, please like the video if you like the channel. That helps me out a lot because it tells the, you, uh, the YouTube robot overlord that people like the video and that someone else, he, he thinks, well, geez, some people like this other people might like it and some people might like it I know it's a bit of an acquired taste but uh, I do uh, like to indulge myself in believing that uh, those of you that like the channel like what I'm doing and uh, uh, I know it doesn't actually tick every box for everybody but um, at least I'm consistent <laughs> this is what I was telling my wife earlier <laughs> when I was hassling her about something I hassle her about on a regular basis she's like yes dear <laughs> I'm like well at least I'm consistent I'm not coming up with new stuff babe <laughs> anyway um, so the size of this thing is 7 by 10 and I actually painted this motif before and it is on the channel I wish I knew the name um, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt the flow of things. Have you sit there, waiting for me to look it up? I know I should have had that, but it doesn't really matter. You can, you can dig around if you want, and find it. It's actually been flipped, and it's actually maybe the same size, but really has a very distinctly different feel. Now the um, the other version of this motif, uh, I traded with a, a very good friend of mine who is a a wood carver out here in New Zealand, a, a master carver, and um, I says, "Well, pick a painting, man." You know, uh, uh, he did a carving for me, and he picked out that one, and so he has that painting, which thrills me because um, I like that one a lot too. This one has a bit of a different feel, and really, what's going on here is a direction I'd like to explore um, quite a lot more, um, which is a little slightly abstracted you know still can definitely tell what it is but I wasn't afraid to kind of just play up certain things certain aspects of it and I think it works very well very successful and one of the real challenges with this is like it's a little creek going through the woods but it wasn't a very deep creek it was quite shallow so it's quite indistinct where the water starts and the land stops or what have you um, it's, but I basically just went on instinct and of course I had some, some nice reference, but the reference wasn't really helping because it was vague in the reference. You look at the reference, you know what's going on. And, um, I managed to pull that off in this painting too. Meanwhile, doing a lot of extensive simplification. So, um, yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of that. Also, uh, just green on top of green on top of green on top of green. And um, handling greens is one of the toughest things for 
any new painter to um, figure out and I have to say one of the first things that you need to learn if you're starting out is that most of the greens that are called green um, are not going to help you with landscape painting my, the foundation of all my greens is the Mike Green, Mike's Green, which um, I know I talked about this recently, but it's good information. It, I know uh, new people need to hear this all the time, and I'm surprised that a um, company hasn't actually come out with this mixture. But Mike's Green is a combination of Hansa Yellow Medium from Gamblin. I do not know the pigment code, but a lot of suppliers have the same pigment code and what they would call cadmium hue. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm sorry I don't have that information. It's PBY something. It's PY. I don't know. Anyway, you go to Gamblin's site and you look up um, Hansa Yellow Medium. In fact, I just buy it from Gamblin. They make excellent paint. It's an excellent color and it's very much like the color of cadmium. There's a few differences. One, it's not toxic where cadmium is highly toxic and so I avoid it. I do have a tube of cadmium. I whip it out now and again just for fun. Uh, especially after learning thanks to a subscriber of the channel that um, for all these years the reason I was using the cadmium hues is because I was uh, led to believe that they um, actually conflicted with lead white um, which is not the case. They they do technically if it was a raw mixture but in a suspension of oil um, there's not a problem so um, that's what I've come to understand so I play with it now and again and truth be told um, it's mostly in lighter green spots and things like that. Anyway I have some a small tube of cadmium yellow but my primary yellow is Hansa Yellow Medium. I mix that with ivory black and uh, I actually mix it with just you know pretty relatively cheap ivory black. Um, my feeling about ivory black is that it's just ground up bones so you know you could get it from one supplier or the next. Um, for my ivory black that I use as the black color on my palette I use the Griffin from um, Windsor, Windsor Newton. Uh, that's a quick dry alkaloid because ivory black is a slow dryer but funny enough in the mixture with the yellow to create a green it's not particularly uh, slow drying at all I don't have any issues so you know you go figure um, and the Hansa yellow medium is not a super fast dryer or a super slow dryer it's kind of in the middle yeah so anyway um, and speaking of yellows I know some artists that and this is like I get a lot of questions about color palette and that's one reason I I flash it by at the beginning of the video but I would like to say regarding color palettes that um, it's a very subjective thing sorry I heard a nice noise outside I was wondering what the heck is that someone's messing around out there yeah and it's eight o'clock at night it's quite dark right now too. We just had our first day of winter, so darkest day of the year, right? Anyway, going back into yellows, like uh, someone like Richard Schmidt, I believe he has like three or four different yellows on his palette, and <clears throat> he's got good reasons for that. Um, for my part, I have two yellows. One is yellow ochre, and the other is the Hansa Yellow Medium. Now they do make a Hansa Yellow Light, and they might even make a Hansa Yellow Deep, um, and no doubt they have some value and especially depending on what your your working methods are and this is one of the reasons why I always say that the um, the color palette is very subjective I recommend starting out with the just the basic palette you know like pick a blue pick a yellow um, a Hansa yellow medium would be a good one pick a red <sighs> actually I'd have to have I'd have to have Burnt Sienna and Alizarin Crimson. I, I couldn't have one or the other. But I could get by on a palette that was, say, Cobalt Blue, uh, Yellow Ochre, um, Hans Yellow Medium, Burnt Sienna, and Alizarin Crimson, uh, and Ivory Black. It didn't used to be the case, but uh, 
Now, before I was using ivory black, I would have had to put like phthalo green on the palette. And so you go, well, there's a green. You said you weren't using a green. Well, predominantly when I was using a lot of phthalo green, I was just mixing it with the alizarin crimson to get a chromatic black. But uh, about two years ago, I switched just plain old ivory black, and it works really well for me. And this is one of the things I was, I was talking to another painter the other day, like, I could never do that. It's so cold. It's so dead. You know, and this is a perception thing. I don't find ivory black to be a dead color at all. I think it's a very, very beautiful color. I absolutely love it. And But for years I didn't use it because everyone was telling me, don't use it. You're going to have nothing but problems. And, uh, yeah, I don't have any problems. And um, it has its uses even if you're not using it as your darkest color. Uh, for one, I mean, you can use it to kill color uh, very well. But kind of getting back into the yellow, so... I don't even know why you need a pale yellow uh, when you could just take your main yellow and add a little bit of white or even mix it with yellow ochre. That actually is very interesting. Yellow ochre with a little bit of Hansa yellow and a little bit of white. I suspect um, that it's because um, people are not using a white like a lead white. Uh, maybe if you're using titanium white, you're not getting that flexibility with your whites. I find titanium white on its own to be just really really opaque it's super slow dryer and uh, I personally mix it with the lead white which has been perfectly stable for oh, I don't know 10 years now um, I've seen no cracking crazing any problems at all as a matter of fact I know that uh, natural pigments which is a wonderful company by the way I just picked up their lead white their lead white number two it's really really odd it's very ropey and stringy very interesting paint um, I did a little figure drawing with that actually I really enjoyed working with it uh, natural pigments check them out they um, especially if you're in the US because uh, I had to pay like 30 something bucks for shipping but uh, it's hard to get the lead white and they specialize they don't even they don't just have lead white they have like four different kinds I think four different kinds and one of the things they have see I get around to my point is they have a uh, preparation for uh, a painting like uh, for prepping your board that's a mixture of lead white and titanium white so that's a dead giveaway and so why do I mix those two together well that's a really good question in fact I maybe even call it Mike's I should call it Mike's white <laughs> I don't think I do in my inter introductory uh, little s uh, scroll there but it is Mike's white and um, with the uh, it's pretty close to 50 50 as well but the lead white gives you flexibility transparency quick drying uh, whereas it can be a little too transparent sometimes you can really struggle to get passages uh, I mean it's not as transparent as zinc white but compared to titanium white it's quite transparent it's actually wonderful for painting figures um, and it's just you can use it straight if you want but also the it's you know three or four times more expensive than the titanium but that's not the main reason I do the mixture um, with, with the two mixed together I get the best of both worlds with I get the opacity of the titanium white um, and titanium white is a nice long-lasting color too so it gives me that you know like notch or two extra opacity which you really want if you're mixing whites you know generally you want some opacity um, the exception might be for you know a scumble or something like that but uh, I scumble with that mixture all the time when I add the oil it's you know I can make it pretty thin and it works great so anyway I suspect that the reason why a lot, a lot of painters have you know, a deep yellow, a medium yellow, a light yellow, and yellow ochre. It's just because uh, uh, they're working with that titanium white, and they don't maybe don't have the flexibility um, in those light uh, yellows uh, or other deep yellows. Um, one day I might just buy a tube of each. I, I know it wouldn't make a difference, though, it's because of my mindset. I really am using just pure yellows. They're always modifying the greens in some way, or modifying the whites in some way. You know, uh, I don't. You, you can use them a little in tans, I reckon, too. But uh, speaking of, we got one more mini here. My favorite way to make tan is, uh, in fact, I would have done that in this painting. And that little back is uh, 
raw umber and white with a little bit of yellow ochre makes the best tan ever ever anyway getting close to the end here we are at the end actually thank you for joining me today like i said this won't be in my store but please go to my store check it out there's no the discounts over sorry those of you that were thinking of uh, taking advantage of it you should have got on it yeah Anyway, there's some good stuff in the store. Uh, this won't be, but uh, we'll have. I have a bunch of stuff I'm going to be photographing. Anyway, until I see you again, take good care and stay out of trouble.